So on our Explore the Shore series, many people have been asking about their favorite animal being depicted, and that's nudibranchs or sea slugs. So today we're actually going to tackle that for you. We've invited along a nudibranch expert, Georgina Jones, and she's going to tell us something about local South African nudibranchs. So here we go. So Georgina, all, all divers I think love nudibranchs, but you've taken it one step further. Well, I, I got super lucky. The, the world expert on nudibranchs um, started out here in South Africa and wrote um, Southern African nudibranchs in 1987. Mm -hmm. And in that he had 268 species. And we now looking at publishing a book with close to 800 species. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, I was around when Terry was here in the 1980s, and I remember him telling me that when he started his project back then, there were only 90 species Good of nudibranch known from the region. And he thought he'd done a fantastic, complete job by raising it from 90 to 200 and something. And now here you are, you've like tripled that all over again. Yeah. Okay. Exactly, yeah. and still finding new, new, ones, all new the time. ones that nobody's ever seen before, which is just astonishing. It's a very diverse group. Right? It's a gigantically diverse group. So the, the word nudibranch, that's nudie is naked and gill, so these are the guys that have naked gills, right? So you have nudibranchs, which is the biggest group, but then they're, they're um, cousins, if you like. They're the sea hares, the sap-sucking slugs, the air-breathing slugs, and unlike the bigger group, or, or most of the bigger group, they, they have no internal shell whatsoever. Uh, okay. Part of what makes them interesting for me is that unlike something that does have a shell, their defenses are active and chemical, whereas something with a shell can have a, a passive structural Just withdraws defense. into its shell and exactly. then say, pulls up the into the door. Yeah, whereas a nudibranch has to be, has to be more, more on it than that. <laughs> so what they do as, as a group is generally they will eat um, toxic animals, so sponges or anemones or moss animals, and they will use the, the prey-derived toxins, which I think is extraordinary. <laughs> so yeah. like eating curries and then they become keeping, very spicy. Keeping the spice, yeah. <laughs> Except for the fact that obviously it's a completely different animal group. Yeah. Um, and and they're, taking, they're eating those, those toxins and using them. Un, some of them metabolize them, but most of them, it's an undamaged stinging cells, for example, from an anemone that they will then use. So it actually goes through their gut wall without being fired and then relocated yeah. to parts of their body. That's an incredible strategy. Here. Yeah, so some of them, apparently, if you, were to, if you were to touch them, they would sting you the same as the, there's one that feeds on blue bottles. Okay. And that could sting you um, as, as much huh. as a blue bottle could sting you. Yeah. Amazing. Is that the reason why they're so brightly coloured, Georgina, that they've got these chemical defences? Some of them, yeah, are super brightly coloured, and that's another part of the fascination, okay, I think, yeah, yeah. is the, the beauty of them, the astonishing range of colours and patterns and shapes and decorations that they have. But then you've got a whole group that are incredibly well camouflaged, that, okay. that even if you know that you're looking at one because you can see the egg ribbon, you don't see the animal because okay. it's that well So you've got two camouflage. choices here. So you either say, I'm, I'm very brightly colored and you can see that I'm naked and obviously I'm not good to eat, or else you hide away. And you know, maybe those are defenses against different types of predators that either feed by smell or feed by sight. By sight, yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, Amazing. I think we should go and see if we can find some. Let's do that. Here's something we can take a look at here. Look, there's a, a little culled nudibranch. In fact, there's another one. These are super interesting for me. They're the only nudibranchs that, strictly speaking, are actual predators in terms of the fact that they hunt. Okay. They've got a, a culled hood. They kind of clump down yeah. over their and they And they can use it to catch little baby shrimpy things in the water. Right, yeah. 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 I've seen them doing that. And I mean, you see like a little amphipod crawling across the rock and then they just go, and then they 
pull in the bottom of the, of the cowl and you can actually see the amphipod swimming around and around in the basket after it's been closed. Can't be a good moment. Bye bye. Bye, bye amphipod. <laughs> also, you know, a lot of the time you see them, they're, they're laying eggs mm, or they have mm. laid eggs and that's how you spot them as you see the little yellow Very egg ribbon. bright yellow ribbons that are curled yeah. into a little... Yeah. Uh, Georgina, we've got some codium here which is uh, an unusual type of alga which has very large cells and there's a group of nudibranchs that have adapted to basically piercing these cells and sucking out the photosynthetic machinery and using it for themselves. Yeah. So t tell us a bit about that group. I so, actually see one here and here's its little egg strand as well. So they're usually super well camouflaged because of the way they, they, they eat. They, they take up the sap from, from various different sorts of algae and use the chloroplasts in the sap to photosynthesize. Effectively, it's like slave labor. Yeah, They've solar got the, powered slugs. They, they, kidnap, they kidnap the the chloroplasts and make them produce sugars for their own selves. Fantastic adaptation. So eh? It's an amazing adaptation. So effectively they become walking plants or crawling mm, mm, plants. Mm. So you get some that live on this codium um, and others like the samurai that lives on very skinny, very skinny filamentous algae. The, this one has got wings that it will open up to be a bigger solar panel and the ones that live on the, the, skinny, the skinny algae have lots and lots of different um, branches so that they've okay. got extra like area. extra leaves on a tree to yeah. increase the surface area. Yeah. That's very, very clever little, all for, little all beast. for photosynthesis that they get But these are pretty, pretty tiny jobs, these. So if you see the seaweed, you've got to really get down on your hands and knees and look at it to see these animals. They're only a few millimeters long. Plus super well camouflaged. Yes. Yeah. Here's a nice piece of of sponge here. There's quite often things on that, aren't there, Georgina? Yes, absolutely. A lot of um, dorids, uh, which is a subset of nudibranchs, specialize on sponges, specifically because they're um, they're poisonous. They they will take out of the suite of toxins that the sponge produces. They'll take four or five of them for their own use and keep them in their tissues to protect them from their predators. And some of them are very cryptic, like this one. Yes, these ones are amazingly cryptic, very hard to see. You just actually have to go do a yellow sponge and stare at it, and eventually you'll, <laughs> you'll see it. Or you will, you hope. <laughs> so, Georgina, I think I'd like to ask you a little bit about a couple of the species that we haven't actually seen this morning. But yeah. And one of the most common things that I get asked is about these sea swallows, yes. which are very pretty little nudibranchs that wash up on the beach after onshore winds. Sea swallows are, are pelagic um, nudibranchs that, that basically gulp air into their tummies and then they float around on their backs until they bump into blue bottles, which they then eat. And um, like their relations, they will take those stinging cells from the blue bottle and put them into their own bodies that they will use for their yeah. defense. So they can, so they can sting, you. sting you. Yeah, yeah. they can sting okay. you like a blue bottle can sting you. Yes. And once they're washed up on the beach like that, I guess that's tickets for them. They've, they've well, had it. Well, they ha they've had it, but those stinging cells will still work. Okay. So treat with care, <laughs> okay. definite care. So they're very, very pretty, but don't touch. Yes. The sea swallows are, are related to um, these anemone nudibranchs, the saldonensis. Um, in terms of the fact that they also eat things that sting and they'll take the stinging cells, pass them unharmed through their digestive systems and put them in their And they're tissues. getting their dinner and they're also getting their defense from the same meal. Do well, that's pretty, pretty darn clever. Uh, many of the nudibranchs that we've seen today have got egg strands. Can you tell us a little bit about the reproductive biology in, in this group? Yes, that's something I find very interesting. They're hermaphrodites, which is to say they have male and female organs in the same body, which means that any time they meet another member of their own species, they can mate with them. Anyone will do. Exactly one so. They all start out as, as males, and effectively any time they find a, another member of their species they can and will okay. mate and they will take in if they don't have if they haven't yet developed their female organs they will keep the sperm until mm. such time as they're ready to fertilize so they're like freezing their sperm and keeping it until the opportune moment to, until to until they're ready the to so until they're ready to have a family clever, hey? effectively yeah. <laughs> and then the eggs get laid wrapped in a toxic 
matrix so that instead of staying and looking after their eggs, the nudibranchs will leave them in a poisonous matrix so that hopefully nothing is going to eat mm. them. They're not the easiest animals to see and it's always an exciting event when people find nudibranchs on the shore. Like a treasure yeah. hunt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nudibranchs and their family are found across the globe. Many of them occur in the shallow waters that we explore. Each species has its own peculiar behaviors and adaptations, but mostly they're loved for their stunning beauty. Why don't you head down to the shore on the next low tide and see if you can find one? You can send us your pictures on Instagram. If you have any questions, you can drop them in the comments for our next Q&A and subscribe for more Explore the Shore.